because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Work Hardaholics. This is Shirley Crawford, your original Work Hardaholic, and also the owner of Second Chance Consulting and the executive director of the Women's Business Center, RVA. Welcoming you back once again to join us for another fun-filled occasion. Because for those of you who don't know exactly what a Work Hardaholic is, let me tell you, a work hardaholic is someone who is always doing something. We don't rest on our laurels. We don't kick back and just let the world pass us by. We make things happen. That's who we are, and we're not apologizing for it anymore. Whole new year, same attitude. No more apologizing. This is who we are. And we make the world a better place so we know you really do like us. We know you like us. You really like us. Whether you know it or not. So, uh, first and foremost, for those of you who are your first time joining us, welcome, 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 welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. So this is what happens here. We spend a few minutes together and we learn more tools to be a better work hardaholic. But we also make sure that at the end of the day, our life is about balance. So because we work hard and yet play harder, we still have to make sure that we're not waiting until we're so stressed out before we get to the play part of the program. So we share some tips, some tools, some techniques, some other information you want to know just to be a better work hardaholic. You ready? Let's go. So where do we always start? With our word for the week. And so right now, um, it's the beginning of January for me. When you're watching this, I don't know what it is. But everyone's into making their resolutions, making these promises to themselves of the better person that they will be because it's now 2020 and they've got 2020 vision. Well, here's the thing. I'm not one for resolutions. Just so you know, that's me. You choose to do it however you choose to do it. I'm all about goals. I'm all about writing the vision and making it plain. I'm all about making forward progress. But I believe that resolutions can have a negative impact. Because when you set yourself up for failure, which some of you do, because you have these lofty goals that you know require a whole lot more than the average bear can do. And I know that as, work, as a work harder like we're more than the average bear. But still, if your aspiration is to make a million dollars in the first month of the year, you got a game plan? Is there some way you're working your way towards that? Then you get started with whatever, whatever it is you're really thinking, and then it becomes too much to chew. And so then you stop, and then you're like, I knew it couldn't happen. But you set yourself up to fail with um, not just unrealistic expectations, but no plan to get there. There are very few things that are not possible. You need to figure out the research on how to get there, what's required, who's done it before, do some market research, make it happen. I know it sounds so simple, but yet still we do the opposite. But anyway, on that note, for our word for the week, I thought a lot about not just the piece of, you know, um, setting up a resolution, but what's the real thing behind the resolution? What's going to make you accomplish a goal? We set goals all the time, but what's the impetus? That's our word, in case you didn't catch it. Impetus. What's our impetus to make it happen? So impetus is more, it's often thought about in like physical sciences, but really it's the momentum. What makes that move? What makes that happen? Um, I think of it often terms in what's the motivation. So it's not enough that you're going, so like for me, for 2020, I have a goal and I'm actually going to create a Facebook group the whole nine to 50 by 50. So I'll be 50 this year, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. No shame about that for me. And so one of my goals is 50 by 50. And I'm telling everyone because I'm all for their accountability. And so starting next week, not this week, 
next week, I start the process. I have a realistic goal of basically two to three pounds a week. Um, I'll be changing eating habits, which I'm not looking forward to, but I am looking forward to having that bikini ready body. <laughs> you won't see it, but I'll have it. That's all that matters to me. So that's a goal, but the impetus behind it is not just the numbers on the scale. The impetus behind it is what's going to keep me going and to truly be motivated about it because um, health is a major issue. I know that even though I'm approaching 50, I'm really just getting to a place where I'm about to do crazy, amazing things in 2020. And that's just the beginning. And I already see around my life the people that I'm impacting and affecting and the changes, this whole snowball effect of things that are about to occur. And I need to be healthy to do that. And so my impetus is because I have a lasting impact and a responsibility to my society, my state, the nation, and the world. And so I shouldn't shorten that because I'm not healthy, because I'm making bad decisions. So I have an impetus beyond just looking hot. Although, hey, I'm all for that too. But my goals are beyond that. So that's my impetus. So use that in a sentence. Impetus. Great, great word. Okay, I used a lot of time to talk about that. So our next segment, the next thing we're going to talk about is, of course, our time tool technique. So still in the same motivation, still in the same vein of impetus. If you're really looking to have something that you're looking to accomplish, then for most of you, especially if you're a business owner, then you should be really thinking about, like, what's your campaign? How are you making people know your brand, your product, your service, that you exist that you're out there in the world of so much noise of pretenders. And here you are really knowing what it is you're talking about, but no one hears you. So one of my um, time tool techniques is a marketing calendar. So in a minute, I'll show you mine. It's probably going to go like right here. I think. We'll see. It could be over there. It could be over here. Could be. I think it'll be right here. And so that's the my current marketing calendar, or that's the framework for it the special holidays throughout the year, events that we'll be hosting, the themes throughout the year, where do I want to be present with regards to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, which I haven't been using a lot recently. I know I've got to do better. Um, and where I want to be marketing-wise, as far as newsletters, even interviews, like how do I want to be seen? How do I want to make my eight, eight, eight touches um, for every message? What's the message that I want to share? So having a marketing calendar helps with that substantially. Um, and so it's a great technique. If you want me to, I'll show you how I made mine. But you know, you can really do Pinterest. You can go online. There's a YouTube video for that. But if you want me to do it, hey, let me know. I'll show you too. Okay, so that takes me to our Book It moment. Book It, Dedo. And so this is a book that I haven't read yet. So if you've read it, please let me know. But it's on Time Magazine's top 25 business management books. And it fit our theme. Because to me, the impetus is really all about the impetus for your goals. Not your resolutions, but your goals. Okay. Um, and so with that in mind, the book is called da, 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 The Goal. Didn't see that coming, did you? And it's by, um, I'm looking at the name, um, Mr. Goldrat. I don't know how I feel about the name, but it's not my name. And so the thing that made it really interesting to me is that as far as goals go, it's all about eliminating bottlenecks. So those things that get you all choked up and really wrapped up in concern, um, it's specific to talk about in business, but I'm willing to bet it can be applied in other areas of your life as well. Okay, on that note, time is zooming by. I spend a lot of time talking about impetus. For your work hard, play harder moment, I've been cuckoo, cuckoo between everything else that I've been running around doing. There's a lot going on. My mother's in my office. I won't show you because she's taking a nap. So we've all been running ragged. We've had all kinds of things going on. And so now we're wrapping up. And so, But I had to come spend time with you all. But you can wave hello to my mommy. She's over there. And so... For your work hard, play harder moment, if we're really talking about having good balance, a really great technique, a really great thing to do, which is amazingly simple, is to think about someone other than yourself. 
no rocket science, but it's amazing what empathy and sympathy will do for you. And so I know for me, like I love to take teenagers on mission trips. Like I love to take them out of the country because we live in a narcissistic society and we only think about ourselves. And right now there's a big gigantic wave of entitlement uh, based on nothing. Just the assumption that it's my right to have. And so taking our teens in particular, some of you all probably need to go too. But taking our teens in particular is very eye-opening for the, from the realize that in other parts of the world, life is a whole different thing. So like when I tell people in particular, like Haiti, which is one of my um, the countries that I've lived in, and it's where I have my nonprofit, and I do a bunch of work there. They don't have a social services system at all. Education is not free. So here they are in poverty and they have to pay to go to school. They pay for their uniforms, pay for their books. Um, although most times they photocopy them and they'll hand sew their uniforms. But even so, there are no gimmies at all. And um, and so we look at them on the news and we think, oh, they why are they so, why are they so? But it's a whole different situation. And just that moment of thinking about someone other than yourself, no matter how big or how small, will make you a better person. And that's what we want after all, right? So, as I always say, live better, do better, be better. And as always, happy entrepreneuring. Ta-ta. Because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da.